Hey everyone, so welcome back. In this video, we'll be solving another cross-site scripting lab on Ports Figure Academy. So let's get started. So this lab contains a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability in the comment functionality. And to solve this lab, we need to submit a comment that calls the alert function when the blog post is viewed. Okay, so we have stored XSS in the comment functionality and we need to submit a comment that calls the alert function. Awesome. So let me just head over to the lab and open any of the blog post so I can access the comment section where we have the cross-site scripting vulnerability, right? So let me just scroll down and this is the place where we have the cross-site scripting vulnerability. That is the comment section, right? Now, as you see, we have four different fields here, right? Not just one or two fields. I mean, we have four different fields and we don't know which of these fields is actually vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Okay, let me just tell that to you again. We know that there is a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the comment section but we don't know which of these fields is actually vulnerable to cross-site scripting vulnerability. I mean, there can be a possibility that all these are actually vulnerable to cross-site scripting vulnerability or maybe one or two, right? So that is why we need to test each and every field for XSS here. Got it? Awesome. Now, like every time, whenever I try to find cross-site scripting vulnerability, the first thing that I do is I always inject less than symbol along with some text after that. So here I'll put text, sorry, test comment. And here I'll give test name, right? So test name, uh, test email, email, and here I'll give test website. So test website and post the comment. And okay, it looks like this need an email address. So let me just remove and give demo at demo.com. Post the comment. Okay, we need an email address format here. So HTTPS google.com and post the comment finally and the comment has been posted. So let me just go back to the same blog post to check my comment and here is my comment. Now let me just check the source code of the page so I can actually see how my inputs are being reflected on the page, right? So control U and search for test something like that. So test name, right? The first one was test comment and the second one was test name so i'll just check for test comment right so test comment and there you go so you can see that the less than symbol is being reflected as less than symbol that means the server is not validating this comment field got it fine now if you observe the next one right for the next one that is a test name field right the test name you can see that the less than symbol here is being validated by the server that is being encoded by the server so this field, the name is being encoded. That means, you know, it is being validated by the server and this comment field is not being validated by the server. And that is the reason when I told you, right? I mean, you don't know which field can be vulnerable. And that is why you should always test all the fields for XSS. Here, the comment field is vulnerable, but name might not be or might be vulnerable. I mean, the initial analysis says that it might not be because the server is actually encoding the list than symbol. The comment field is definitely vulnerable because it is still reflecting the less than symbol without any validation. So what I can do is I can simply inject an SVG XSS payload which just uses less than symbol. So let me just do that. So what I'll do is in the comment, I'll do less than SVG on load is equals to alert one, two, three, close the bracket, double slash. So this is an XSS payload. I mean, this is pretty much famous which uses just the less than symbol and no greater than symbol. Okay. So in the name, I can just give anything because in the initial analysis, we know that that might not be vulnerable for XSS. And in the email, I'll give demo at the demo.com. For website, I'll give google.com. Okay. So post the comment. And let me just go back to the same blog post. And you can see that one, two, three is being popped up on the page. I mean, the alert box actually worked. So let me just go to the comment section right and go back to the source code of the page and if i scroll down right if i scroll down you can see that the svg xss payload is actually being injected on the page and that is why it worked right so that's it for this video that is how you solve the lab and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe bye